serious, rural folk, what is the most creepy thing you've seen or experienced? My brother and I were home alone watching TV. He had an inflatable, life-size Stone Cold wrestler in the basement. When you punched it, it would pop back up and say things like cause Stone Cold says so. So, we're watching TV, and we know it's just us at home when suddenly we hear cause Stone Cold says so coming from the basement. Very creepy since the thing wouldn't talk on its own. Something had to have moved it, and we were home alone. We both just looked at each other and ran downstairs to see what was happening. My dog had Stone Cold horizontal by the waist, and poor Stone Cold was rapidly deflating, water from the bottom weight dripping into the carpet like clear, white blood. My dog's eyes were glazed over from the glory of the kill, and he'd periodically give Stone Cold another shake for good measure. You see, my brother had been chasing my dog with Stone Cold for about two weeks, and my dog was very afraid of this inflatable man. I only wish I'd seen him working up the nerve to approach and kill him. RIP Inflatable Stone Cold I was in northern Wisconsin with my family as a kid. While I was up there, I went on a little hike with my brother and dad, just sort of going through some woods. Ended up emerging from them onto someone's property, and the dude there saw us, came up with his kid, and asked the obvious, uh, what are you doing on my property? My dad just apologized and said we were hiking and that he shouldn't have been so careless. We went back quickly, and while the encounter was odd, it didn't feel tense or anything. My brother and I also learned a good lesson about respecting private property. However, the dude we encountered was apparently not satisfied, I get it to some degree. If I lived outside an urban area, I'd be suspected too if someone emerged from the forest onto my property. Things got weird though. The guy we encountered actually got some goon who either worked for or was related to him to track us back to our cabin. About 5 minutes after we got back and started to make lunch, this goon literally waltzed inside the cabin. It began to talk about how we were caught trespassing. He wasn't yelling or angry or anything. However, it was still pretty jarring having some camo wearing guy that you've never seen before, to just barge into your grandparents house. He didn't have a lot of time to say much because our grandparents owned a few guns, mostly antiques though, and sure enough, one got pulled on him. Our grandma held this guy up and actually apologized again for the prior instance of trespassing. Then she started to yell at him, though for following us, trespassing on our property, and straight up coming inside uninvited, and then he left. It was a really weird encounter. I have talked to my dad and brother about it on occasion, though, so it wasn't a dream or my imagination. Either way, don't trespass. That's the lesson I learned. Australia has a reputation for scary animals, but people don't ever talk about the sounds you hear. The cutest, most fluffy, sweet-faced little animals make demon noises in the dark. Our birds scream, possums sound like horror movie noises, koalas sound like giant monsters. All of these are completely harmless. Generally, the dangerous animals are, coincidentally, the ones you can't hear. The first time I heard a baby rabbit scream as it was taken by a fox, I could have sworn that it was someone getting done in. Anyway, my dad has a story about those owls. He was in his 20s, in the early 70s, and was staying at a married mate's place so they could do some rabbit shooting. They're in the country. Middle of the night, dad suddenly wakes up to the sound of a woman screaming. He jumps out of bed and finds the dude and his wife are already standing in the living room in their PJs and nightdress, worried looking, and then they all hear it again. He describes it like a horror movie scream. They're all convinced that someone is out there, in the middle of Fleuru Peninsula, getting straight up murdered. And they hear it again. So, dad and his mate grab their rifles, tell the wife to lock the doors behind them, and they head out. They're going to save this lady from whatever fate is befalling her. It's a clear night, and the moon is near full. They're walking further and further away from the house, and they're intermittently hearing the scream, but they can't pinpoint exactly where it's coming from because there's a bit of a breeze. They've been out there for a while. The scream, as though someone is getting stabbed, tortured, mutilated, is wearing them out, and they're getting jittery. How could this go on so long? How is she still alive? Is she still alive? They've started convincing themselves that something supernatural is going on. They turn around to go back to the house and call the cops. As they turned around, they heard the scream from right above them, and there, standing in the moonlight, was a woman in a long nightgown which is fluttering in the breeze. She reaches out to them. So, Dad's skeleton tries to exit his body, and his mate had his rifle to his shoulder before he realized that his wife had gotten worried and followed them out. And that is the story of the screaming owl and how two dudes came close to shooting a woman while trying to save an imaginary one. I live in a fairly rural part of NJ surrounded by forest and hills. 
One night in high school, my friends and I were driving down one of the local back roads to find a place to chill and smoke. As we're driving, a deer jumps out in front of the car, as they normally do. This time though, as we slowed down, the deer turned around back the way it came, walked up to a tree, and then proceeded to bash its head in on the tree in one hit and fall dead. It didn't run into the tree. It walked over and then slammed its head into it. It was the weirdest behavior we've ever seen. It could have been rabies, but it was really freaky. Unsettled all of us and we decided to go back and smoke at my friend's house. Also, the fox screams. Holy hell, does it sound like murder? My uncle used to live way out in the country on a plot he said was a little less than 8 acres. His closest neighbors weren't terribly far away, within quick driving distance, but also just far enough that walking wasn't very viable. Anyways, I spent my 8th grade summer there, and he had one story that scared the shit out of me back then. He had an array of animals on the farm, three hunting dogs, pigeons, dozens of chickens, other various birds, a few goats, and a lone horse, and every night he would make his rounds through his farm just to make sure everybody was where they were supposed to be and that everything was locked up. One night as he's walking back to his house, his dogs start going wild. He initially doesn't care about it and continues on his way, but his dogs are just relentlessly barking. He points his flashlight around and doesn't see anything. He gets to the back door of his house, his dogs still barking, and so he turns around one last time. Way out in his fields, he says he does see what looks like a moving shadow. He automatically assumes it's a coyote or some other wild animal and just goes inside. The next night as he goes out to make his rounds, he said he was immediately stopped as he spotted some sort of shadowy figure just a little distance away from his barn. He didn't say anything, but he did take out his gun. Again, his initial thought was maybe a coyote trying to get his chickens. However, as he took a few steps, he said the figure suddenly stood up, almost human-like, and ran into the field, covered in darkness. He said he was so startled he just froze for a moment before yelling out, Hey! He didn't give chase to whatever or whoever it was. He did say that for about a week after, his dogs would go ballistic at night, but he never saw the figure again. When he told me the story, he said that it probably could have just been a transient, but I don't know. The dude lived in the middle of nowhere and had to drive like 40 minutes to shop. Seems incredibly bizarre for some random homeless to even be in that area. He said it could have also been a black bear, but I don't know either. He wasn't even close to the kind of area I would think black bears inhabit. The dude lived in a rural country farming area, not anywhere remotely close to mountains, forests, etc. Used to live in the rural Philippines in a tiny fishing village in Tinambacan. Next to our house was a fenced off lot that had been overgrown and a really broken down house. It always looked really creepy at night, and kids in the neighborhood told me it was haunted. From our rooftop, you could look into the lot. One night I was looking at it, and I saw a strange blue glow coming from inside and shadows moving across the windows. I couldn't place it at all and didn't hear any noise, no people speaking, or any indication of what was causing it. Really scared me. I brought it up to my family, and they told me drag queens were squatting there overnight so that they could attend a nearby disco. So, that was relieving. One night I grabbed my son's toy night vision goggles to see if they even worked. If they did, maybe we could see what was making all the weird howling noises in the woods for the last two nights. So, I looked across the yard into the woods, and there were so many eyes. So. Many. Eyes. They were everywhere. In one case, there was a grouping of three eyes. I had myself convinced it was just a possum with its baby, and I couldn't see the other eye, but then they all blinked at the same time. I have never ever used night vision to look in the woods again. Whatever deformity was there can have its space. When I was a child, two of my friends and I decided to explore around an abandoned house that was down the road from us. Typical abandoned house look, paint peeling off everywhere with exposed wood in some spots, plants and vines overgrown, broken windows, roof tiles missing here and there. Well, we walked inside, and it matched the outside, cupboards broken, floorboards splintered and cracked. Other than the place being extremely empty, we didn't really get any scary vibes from it. Nothing really stood out to us as paranormal as we'd expect. So, we leave the house mildly disappointed. We're walking alongside one of the windows when this very well-dressed, well-groomed man, maybe in his 60s, wearing a black dress coat, white shirt, and black tie, comes into view. We didn't see him inside, never heard anything. Yet here was this man just staring at us blankly through the window. Friends and I booked it as fast as we ever ran out of there and back home. 
It probably was just one of the property owners that just happened to be inside the same day we were, there were a few rooms we didn't go in, but good god, that scared the shit out of us, lol. A few years later, the local fire department burnt the place down in a controlled burn, so if it was paranormal, well, it's gone now, lol. A bit late to this thread, but I've never had an opportunity to share this story. My wife and I met in a small rural town on Lake Superior. When we were ready to move in together, we purchased a remote cabin about 40 minutes out of town. It was an incredibly idyllic and peaceful existence for two years when we decided it was time to move closer to family. We had packed all of our items except for two mason jars we had used for celebratory glasses of wine on our last night. When we woke up the next morning, both glasses were destroyed throughout our dining room. It was not like a normal fall with pieces of glass on the floor. There were shards in other rooms, on windowsills 10 feet away from the table, and some pieces of glass were ground into a fine powder. I cannot think of a logical explanation of what happened. Whatever would have created the force to do that damage to the glasses would have woken us up. I am absolutely at a loss of what happened and still think about it frequently all these years later. Grew up in a very rural area of Kentucky on a property about 75 combined acres of woods and empty fields out of a dead end, one lane road. When I was a kid, I was sent to take the trash out to the dumpster after dark. The dumpster was already at the bottom of the driveway. About the time I reached the dumpster, I heard the most blood-curdling scream I have ever heard. Like a woman was being brutally murdered right in my ear. I flew back to the house and had a full-on come apart, crying and telling my dad to get a gun. Fox screams will make your blood run cold. Got stalked by a lone wolf for a few months, that was great, never once aggressive to me though, but he was big. I live on the southeast side of a lake in northern Ontario. In the winter, when the lake freezes, wolves come across the lake from the northwest, usually in packs, and hunt the local wildlife, mostly rabbits, I think, which are abundant. Well, one year, I guess one wolf didn't make it back across the lake before it melted, we had an early spring thaw, and he was around for the summer. There are no street lights on my road, and my friend lives about one kilometer up the road from me. After work, we'd go to their place for beers almost daily, to be honest, then I'd just walk home after. For weeks, I felt like I was being followed and stalked, I'd turn around quick and point my flashlight, and once or twice, I got a quick glimpse of yellow eyes. At that point, I had never seen one here in the summer, in the winter, yeah, going for a rip on a sled sometimes you catch a glimpse in the distance, anyways one night after weeks of this happening, I borrowed a trail camera off of an MNR guy we do service work for, put it on the road not far from my buddy's place, after a few days I pick it up and sure enough there was a big black timber wolf following behind me by like 1 or 2 minutes every night. This really freaked me out, but I had solace knowing that if it wanted to attack me, it probably would have already. All the same, I started driving to my buddy's place instead of hoping for a ride and walking back, until one night I had far more than my usual two after work beers, I grabbed a flashlight out of my truck and started to walk instead of drinking and driving, I'm walking there's maybe a three quarter moon behind me coming through the trees, it's light enough for me to see without my flashlight and I have it off as per the norm, I'm about halfway home, I didn't see him at first, and it was fast in my mind, all of a sudden his eyes got lit up by the moon behind me, the wolf was walking on the opposite side of the road walking in my direction 15 to 20 feet in front of me, I don't know what the hell made me say it, but I just kept walking and just said, yo as we passed and the wolf kind of just grunted and carried on. Every year since then, there have been a lot fewer rabbits in our area. I'm guessing he cleared out a lot of the population that summer. Grew up spending a ton of time in the Colorado Rockies. In college, a friend and I were on a weekend backpacking trip up in National Forest Land, about 300 yards off trail, when we stumbled across a mostly buried bunker someone had made. Think a 20 foot long tough shed, buried up to its roof. We only noticed it because the sun glinted off one of two small windows in the roof, which had been deliberately covered with brush and tree litter. Looking through the windows, we could make out a cot, buckets, tubs of food and supplies, etc. found the door, concealed and partially buried, which had a heavy padlock securing it. Ran out of there with a quickness, didn't want to run into whoever had built the place. 